<laughs> looks pretty crazy. Hmm. Let's make it work. Let's see, how's this going to work? Yeah. There we go. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, just getting things together while I'm waiting for Heidi. I'm winging it by myself today because Jay is on vacation with the family. I'm going to try to figure out the best angle here. Hold on. Whee! What are you doing with the phone? Um, well, Daniel, I'm also streaming this on uh, Meerkat. So I have my phone and getting it set up so that it can record a live stream from your cat. And I usually have my co-host, Jay, here, who does this technical part for me. Whoops. But he's on vacation. That's okay. So yeah, I, I look great. But when, when uh, Heidi gets here, does anybody have any questions for Heidi? Put this right in front, like this. There, that might work. That might work. Yeah. There, that might work. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how that works. How does that look, everybody? Hi, Sean. How does that look? If you can be able to help me out here. Oh, there's Heidi. Awesome. Hi, Heidi. So, Heidi, you can get into the stream. 
by hopping in. Um, got some weird glares going on. Oh, that's gonna be worse. <sighs> Just keep working at it. I want to start right at six, so we're a little early. So, um, hi, there she is. Oh, there she is down there. Okay, that's good. You got all your equipment ready? Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I'll just tilt this. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. What do you think, folks? How's that look? Chase with Minnie. Yeah, I know. I saw that picture. All right, can you hear me okay? Let's see. I forgot to do this at the beginning. So, um, less glare is this way. Oh, there's still a little bit of glare. Okay, that's better. And further away, we end up pressing on buttons. That's bad. Okay, she's cleaning up behind her. That's smart. <laughs> okay, so I think you'll be able to see, um, to see Heidi okay. She's kind of behind the comments there, huh? And, Oh, you see her, huh, Daniel? Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get this move back a little bit. Without mm, causing too much problems. And get it just right. There. Oh. I should have played J-Roll while he's out, but got horrible news. Oh, no, I don't want to hear the horrible news. Can you tell me the horrible news later? Um, Roman is so that you don't feel so bad. My son Roman is going to be monitoring. Um, he's going to be monitoring the comments. Um, so he'll be answering for me when I get to the interview part so that I don't have to look at the comments. So um, hopefully that'll work. And Heidi's just getting set up. And I see that Garner is here and Covert and um, Corey and Daniel, welcome. And uh, got Furquan, okay. And then on Blab, I have Sean and, um, oh, um, Love. Um, and David Pullman was here, but I see, My phone is not very happy. Okay, so how do you how how do you like it? Are you okay? Can you hear me? Doesn't look like she can hear me, huh? Can you hear me, Heidi? Can you hear me? Oh, helps she has her headphones on. Can you hear me? Now, can you hear me? Do you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Oh boy, hello. Now I've got an audio only over here. Hi, can you hear me? I see you. Do you see me? All right. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Hello, covert. All right. This is not being very nice to me. Can you hear me? Oh, right now? yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? What do you think? Oh, that, that okay, was... great. Um, so just waiting for Melissa. You don't I Her screen is frozen, so. Oh. All right, I'll go out and come back in again. Hmm. And she's going to, okay.
I invite. How do I invite you? Invite someone. There, there I am. Oh, right. uh, yay. Yay. <laughs> I oh, went really? out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like, am I supposed to be by myself here? <laughs> no, I could, I could see me. I could see you. you I know, and I was doing stuff. Me. In my room, I'm like, oh, people's gonna see me doing stuff, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I um, I could hear you and see you, but you couldn't hear and see me. Yeah, I know. Um, well, now I can. So okay, good, excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you for having me. I'm so thrilled and um and a little nervous. So I have some wine here to calm me down. So <laughs> why are, why are you nervous? <laughs> I always get a little nervous. It's you know it's excitement. But as soon as I start uh, talking to um to you, I feel so much better. And it's just like the first okay. time I met you, I was just instantly at ease because you're so kind. Aww. <laughs> I try to be kind. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you are so busy. Just knowing that how busy you are, I'm so happy that you're here. But I'm going to take one minute. I have two minutes till we start. Right. To get my camera going. Okay. Okay. No um, worries. You could look at the comments. You could get yourself comfortable. Um, you might want to turn some light up because you're a little dark in the lighting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can. I actually bought light bulbs today. Oh. <laughs> One second. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay. I hate that angle. There. That'll be good. It's better to have me on the bottom because you all know what I look like. I'm going to move this back this way. There we go. Okay. Terrific. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Let me get my notes here. It's still dark. I can't do anything. All um, right. I think you look lovely. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing I can do. And try to, like, these are the, you know, we have actually four light bulbs right now, right here, but I don't know. It's fine. You look fantastic. You look oh, lovely. thank you. You look lovely. So um, when I first get started on my show, the first thing I do is we dance a little bit because we've got some music. So you can't hear the music right now, but you can imagine if you've seen my shows, you know what it's like. Okay. So just do a little groove with me. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing with Heidi. Now, Heidi, how do you say your name? Nazarudin? It's, yeah. You did it perfectly. Excellent. Heidi Nazarudin. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Thank everybody. you so much for coming to see me and Heidi Nazarudin on 10 Minutes in Tinseltown. Tonight, we are going to be talking about blogging, social media, and um, empowerment, really, and um, what it takes to, to be a leader, because you're a leader of many women and many people and an inspiration to so many. And um, I want to introduce you to everybody here at blab.im, Team Blab on um, Twitter. And also we have Meerkat uh, live streaming. Um, oh, um, I've never used Meerkat. Excuse me? I've never used Meerkat. I've never. I know. I, used yeah. I know you've used Periscope. And so today we're on Meerkat. And I thought I almost I was going to say maybe we should do Periscope, too, because I know that you um, that you probably have a big following on Periscope. But maybe now you'll come over to Meerkat now and then. It's kind of fun. It's the same thing. One thing right. one thing we have on on Meerkat that I don't know if they have on Periscope is Cameo. So people can pop in. Their image will be on my Meerkat screen and they can ask questions. So they could talk for 60 seconds. And um, okay. it's kind of cool. And then, uh, of course, you know, it's the same as Periscope where you have comments. But my son, because my co-host Jay 
from uh, Gene Wilder's hair is on vacation this week. So he is really bummed that he couldn't meet you. Um, I know he's really bummed. He was looking forward to meeting you. And um, so he's not here and he usually manages my tech and um, does all the comments and, and questions. So um, my son is going to get on and do that hopefully. But we have quite a few of our friends in our um, comment area here, Covert and Sean um, and Garner. Those are all the um, behind the scenes friends that help out with 10 minutes on t in Tinseltown on uh, Meerkat and Blab. So if you have any problems or questions, they'll be happy to help you. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, before we get started, really, do you have any questions for me? Um, no, not right now. But you know, if I, I do have anything, I'll ask you. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm trying to get rid of this glare. I'm trying to get this most uh, excellent image of you. Hold on. That's probably the best. Okay. Then I'm kind of, I'm in there. You guys don't need to see me, right? Okay. <laughs> I'll fix it later. But um, so Heidi, um, I am just, like I said, I get so excited. Heidi Nazarudin is a blogger at, or started her own blog, the um, ambitionista.com. And I really uh -huh. think that the ambitionista says it all. Um, if you've been to mismaliz.com today, you'll see that I titled my blog post, um, what is your, what is your purpose or how do you determine your purpose? And it's really because I think that ambition is a defining um, word for knowing your purpose, having an ambition in life. So I wanted to start out with asking you about that. How did you determine right. what your purpose would be? And how did Ambitionista come about? Um, first, wait, one second. Do you think I can do this without? Let's try it without. Do I, I need the headphones off or so not? The uh, meerkat would work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do I sound okay? Okay. So the reason I wanted to do it without the headphones is because I am periscoping this and I thought people would love to exactly. see and gotcha. hear, you know, your, your questions as well on periscope. Well, in that okay. case, I'm going to go get my second tripod here. too. <laughs> yeah, we're like, hey. So, okay. Um, hi guys, I'm doing um, a video interview with um, Melissa, Melissa right now. And um, she's talking about how I started as a blogger. I'm a fashion blogger and what made me want to start this. And absolutely. Can you hi everybody again on Periscope. Everyone on Periscope? Um, I'm Melissa Reyes from MsMeliz.com. And my question is really about how did ambit the Ambitionista come about and how did Heidi, how did you determine what your purpose um, would be with that blog? Does that make sense? Uh, the blog is actually an evolution. You know, when I honestly, when I first started, uh, when I resigned from my job as a CEO from an investment banker, I did not know that I was going to end up as a fashion blogger, but I really love fashion. I mean, I work in Tokyo women in Japan were so fashionable and I thought I really wanted to to be a part of fashion. So I thought, how can I do that? And I was a decent writer and being a writer enabled me to move to Los Angeles because you can write from anywhere. So I was writing about fashion and then it, it segued into fashion blogging for a few publications. Um, and at first I was just writing about fashion in general there was no theme to my blogs and honestly my first two blogs actually failed because of this because i didn't have a theme it was just id's fashion blog which covered you know anything and everything so there was no um focus and then because the blog did not work i had to step back and ask myself Terrible. what is what is the purpose of your blog is it fashion you know and so um, generic, and I thought, well, I have this background as an investment banker, and I really love being polished and smart. And I thought I wanted my blog to convey that, yeah, using fashion for professional purposes, for your career, for your business, and that's really how I uh -huh. I set the foundation of my blog. And that was that how was three years ago. That? 
a few years ago. And if anyone in Paris goes, I started Paris Fashion Week. Okay. Months ago. Sorry, but I started blogging seven years yeah. ago. Yeah. So, I started my blog, the um, two years ago. I'm not Kazakhstan. So, I'm Asian. My mom has Northern Indian blood. I'm Malay. And Do people yeah, ask you that all I the time? What your ethnicity is? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think Asian I get looking women get it a little bit more, um, but Hispanic and Latina women get it too. I Nobody's asked me that since I've been on here except, well, I guess I just am really used to it because of my name. You know, they'll want to know if I'm Filipino because that's a popular Filipino name. Well, some Filipinos mm -hmm. do have Spanish um, ancestry. Well, yeah, my husband so is maybe Filipino. That's why. So. And for me, I'm You okay. Okay. Um, okay. It's uh, ethnicity isn't something that concerns me. I never wonder. And, I just like people uh, for who they are and what they look like. Um, right. Yeah. Well, I I don't. And Melissa just disappeared. Yeah, you disappeared from me. <laughs> Can you still hear me? You know what it is, Heidi? Sometimes when yes. you're streaming and doing blob at the same time, it doesn't work. I usually have a rule against it, but um, I'm going to I'm gonna end my, my blab. Is it, my meerkat isn't working because of the streaming on blab. That's a okay. bummer. Okay. So hopefully she'll come back or we'll be able to see I her again and we could do a do-over. Can you see her? Oh, yeah. Hi, Rosie. No, I can I hear you, know. but I can't see you. Uh, yeah, I can hear you fine, which is much That's better true. than not hearing now anything. Now you know what? Yeah. Can anyone, can anyone see I turned, Melissa, out, I turned off my, um, my meerkat because doing both was causing a problem. I'm yeah. doing an interview right now. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yay. Okay. So, next question. So, um, let's see. I was reading about your, I was reading on theambitionista.com about how to own the room. I really like that article that you have up right now. So, tell me about that. Did you interview okay. um, Ariana Savalas and meet her? Or how did you do that interview? I, I yeah, really okay. liked the way you did the interview. It's different. Uh, Well, like I get everything that we do on the Ambition Insights focus on working women. So even though it was about Ariana Savalas, who is an amazing jazz singer, it's not an entertainment blog. So where how does interviewing you know, a jazz singer relate to my blog? And well, she was very confident. So I was invited by her publicist to watch her perform in Beverly Hills at the Dave Cross Lounge. And I love jazz, and so does my boyfriend. And we went there, and she was amazing. She mesmerized the crowd. You know, no nobody could stop looking at her. And I thought, how does this woman, you know, do that? How do entertainers know how to command their presence? And I thought, this is something that all women would want to be able to uh, master. Because we know when you work or when you're uh, presenting or when you are trying to work a crowd, this is a very important thing to have. So I reached out to a publicist and said, I would love to interview Ariana. And he, very lovely man, yeah, he said yes. And so I interviewed her over the phone. She was very nice. She has been performing since she was six years old. Um, she, I think she went to the Beverly Hills school and her earliest, her earliest um, audience, I forgot, but there were some very big names. And she told me, you know, it, it's really about... Right. <laughs> Started right, when yeah, she was six years old. She was six. Like right, so she's, she's really I never known any other way. That's growing yeah. up in you know on stage. Yeah, and she said that uh, she learned how to read a crowd. Like when she first enters the room, she scans it. Even even the way the room looks would uh, influence how she would 
um, interact with the crowd because obviously a more a crowd like in the Beverly Hills Lounge where it's more formal, we're different than like, you know, little small, you know, hole in the wall cafe. So she learns how to read the room and where she's from to know how to react. Like her jokes will be more risque if it's a younger crowd. If it's a corporate crowd, she tones it down, you know, two notches, that kind of thing. And it was a really great interview. Like I learned a lot from her, you know, and I, I do a lot of public speaking. So I thought this is a really good, good thing to know. So when you're walking in a room, for example, I went to the blog her conference. It's more older, mature bloggers. And I would have to be more sedate as opposed to like the 19 year old fashion bloggers and i would like to be and i'll be talking more you know uh, on the atoms well so it was it was great and she Ariana. um yeah she had some really fantastic tips um on how to be or you, the way you put it was how to be uh -huh. an irresistible room captivating rock star and of course that appeals to me because everybody who comes on 10 minutes in tinseltown is a <laughs> rock star to me and i like to look at what things set them apart from you know and how they've become successful in their own world so when the first thing she's that you said that you learned from her is that to start small uh -huh. so in what ways do you apply that like you said, as when you're speaking at a conference, how would you, how do you start small? Like this? Oh, I love this story. Um, yes. Um, well, this is not <laughs> for me starting small. Like I would be super nervous uh, if I haven't done it before because it's a one-on-one -on -one interview. People are reading, uh, watching and reading stuff. I, I get really nervous. I'm still a bit nervous, but I learned how to control it. So how I started small was, when I first started Blogger Babes less than two years ago, I was so nervous meeting new people. And I thought that when I started Blogger Babes on meetup.com, I mm -hmm. would have five bloggers join Blogger Babes. We now have more than 5,000 members. But when we first started, there's five people. And then we had our first meetup <laughs> and there were 12 people. And I was so nervous meeting these new bloggers. That's 12 of them at, at that time. It, it seems like it could have been 2000 to me, you know, like 12, like, I don't know. And I, I was really, really nervous. I almost canceled it. I had butterflies in my stomach, but I braved my stomach and I said, you need to learn how to talk to people in a room. And I started with 12 people. The bloggers that came were so lovely. They were so nice. And that gave me confidence to then talk to a group of 20 people. And then slowly when I conquered the, the 20 people public speaking, I started talking to groups of 50 and then, now I've spoken to large groups of, you know, 500 people. And it, that's how I started small. I started with 12 people and then, and then you know, 15, 20, 50. And now I'm more confident in, in taking that's on how you did. groups. So that's, that's I think on I'm my the same. I started by interviewing yeah. uh, people I knew just for practice, because I knew at least I'd be comfortable with them. And then, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. started by just interviewing anybody who'd be willing to be interviewed. And then I went, I started to go out and asking people for interviewing. And now people ask right. me if I will interview them, which is kind of neat. So um, this, sec this right. Huh? And wine helps. Trust me. Yeah. And the wine <laughs> definitely helps. Well, I wine just helps. went to Monterey <laughs> and Carmel this past weekend, Carmel by the sea. And I went to a tasting room and I got some wine. I don't, I don't always have wine on hand, but I, I was looking for a reason to drink this one. <laughs> So, um, well, that really leads into the next one where it says uh, her next tip was slowly expand your crowd and practice makes perfect. So how did that happen for you with blogger babes and the mm -hmm. ambitionista and the whole blogging world coming from the finance world? How did you um, how did you instill that practice and expanding the crowd? Do you remember? <laughs> um. Well, that's how did I, it would, I applying it to from, blogging and applying it to your um, empire. <laughs> how did it? How did it expand? Did it? Was it natural, well, or did you put a lot of effort into it? How did it? How did it grow? Because it's pretty vast. Um, it's <laughs> well. I came from a corporate background, and my my background was that I grew a company from we had less than 10 employees to, by the time I left, I grew it to 400 people. So I've always been a big fan of organizing and structuring and also delegating so that I'm able to do more. And I've, I think 
inadvertently taken the same the same steps for the ambitionist and blogger base. When I first started, I was a solo blogger. You know, I wrote my own content, and I'm 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 you know, I do everything. And then I thought, I hate formatting my blog posts, and I hate just doing those little things. I just want to chuck at someone the photos and my writing and say, you figure it out, make it look really pretty. Because that actually, if yes. you're a blogger, you know that takes a lot of time. So I want to do that and I can do something like go out and network or go out and pitch brands. And so I hired a VA who helps me. Um, I remember she, she was from the Philippines and this is her own proposal to me I said how much do you want she said three dollars an hour or something ridiculous like that and I'm like really and she said yeah three dollars and then later I found out for the Philippines that oh, wow. that's actually more wow. than their standard rate um four years ago and she, yeah I know and I hired her for a few hours and every week and I the time that I save you know I would go out and pitch brands and do stuff and then she got more and more and then, of course I trained her to do other things and as she grew in skill, I uh, increased her pay. And we worked together very well for two years until she decided to uh, she decided to resign because she mm. wanted to pursue. You probably education. paid for her but education, Heidi. Now we have a full time. Um, actually, I did. She wanted to take well while I was uh, working with her. You know, she said, "I really wish that I learned. I knew how to learn Hootsuite, and I paid for her Hootsuite University subscription." And there's actually two courses that cost, you know, almost a thousand dollars over the course of a year. And I paid for it and I said, yeah, you know, you're helping me work and I want to help you um, do well. And now for Blogger Beats, we have two full-time staff. And for the Ambitionista, we have an editor that's almost full-time. So everything that I can do, if I can delegate it mm -hmm. out, I would do that because I need to grow. And that's that's one way where I've slowly started <laughs> to want to build my empire, as you say it. Um, yeah, and if there is brand extension, it's very, I always ask myself, is this natural to what I'm doing? For example, someone came to me and said, we would love to collaborate with you for a line of soaps. And their soaps were beautiful, but I'm like, soaps? You know, I'm not a, I, I can't see the relationship, you know? So even though it was very, it could be something very lucrative, I just declined because it's not very natural to my brand as fashion for our working women. Now, a line mm -hmm. of staplers, I might actually say yes, because I love beautiful things. Like I, I have this beautiful stapler here and I thought I'd love to have a line of I just have to show you. Office I have my lovely desk, stapler right? here. It's that. in my signature color of red. <laughs> <laughs> it's popping. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yes. So see. Women love beautiful But I don't have any I, soap to I tell you. Work show you. 10, 12 hours. <laughs> yeah, so, no soap. And this, yeah, I love everything of yes. mine has to Me too. Me way, too. That's so. fantastic. So, <laughs> where I'm a, a not a fashion blogger, my blog is about everything. <laughs> it's about me. It's about everything I like. So, I kind of do some things, but there are things I can't do. I, I did, I turned down tires and of course my husband would have loved tires, but I said, well, then you blog about it. But I, I didn't, I didn't know anything about tires, you know, for my car. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. It just wouldn't be me. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And I don't drive. So I, unless the campaign calls for a car that would chauffeur me around like Uber or, you know, <laughs> Big show for it. Uh, I yeah. can't really take car campaigns. No, I can take car campaigns. I'm actually in the market for a car and I've done some things for Ford, but um, I just, I, I, I really hear what you're saying. And I think there are so many bloggers who, and podcasters who are looking into sponsorships too, who will pitch just about anything because we're kind of, you get kind of desperate. Like I'm at a point right now, which I could stop and say right now that this is brought to you by Alerve. It's a new skincare product that I'm going to be um, providing um, links to on my website. And, um, and it's for uh, healthy, healthier skin, but it, and it's a scientific product and I'm going to be uh -huh. talking about it a lot because I'm going to be using it and I'm looking forward to trying it. So, you know, that's the kind of thing. So, um, okay. that moving right along, my dear, you've been so helpful and I'm taking like mental notes of everything that you're saying because I can use it. 
for myself. Um, it's such a rare opportunity to get this one-on-one -on -one advice from you. Um, the next point on the article about being the most irresistible room captivating rock star is to be well rested and focused. And I love that one because being a life coach myself, right. I talk about balance all the time and, um, having, um, ha knowing when to give some time to yourself. So I think that that's really important. So can you tell me about that Okay, a little bit? Um. Uh yeah, you know, when I think it's a bit of common sense, um, if you're going to have a 9 a.m. presentation, don't go out late the next night because you're going to be so tired and frazzled. Um, if I have a big thing, let's say the next morning, that night or even the evening, I'm not going to go out and do stuff. I'm just going to be home and be very relaxed and prepared. That's just my thing. And I think unless you're someone who's just naturally gifted on stage, I don't recommend you going having a ghost night out with your oh. friends until 3 a.m. You're by coastal. You you're travel a lot. You do you get out. tired? I when I met you, I remember how tired you were, but you still were able yeah. to stay focused and relaxed. You had you had a persona that you managed well, to keep up. How do you do that? <laughs> well, I actually got home from um, New York City this morning, and I had to cancel a few things because I knew that I I am not prepared to go out this is slightly different because I'm at home yeah. and I know you so I'm more comfortable like if this was somebody that I've never met before I probably wouldn't schedule it um this evening right then and there and again it's at home and the topics that you exactly. wanted was something that I already know so you know and I've been doing this for a while so I knew as long as I had two hours before this interview with you like I I told my boyfriend I said I'm having an interview, so the next two hours, I'm just gonna be doing my Zen thing. And my Zen thing is actually um, listening to music and just going around, just relaxing myself, preparing for the interview. So that's, you know, I still have, uh, at least, I need at least two hours before an interview, just not doing crazy things. Like I'm not right. gonna run from meeting to no how interview. And people do that. I'm probably and then not that. Yeah. they don't present themselves well. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I'm not at that level yet. Maybe one day when, I don't know, Ryan Seacrest, I know he'd do that. Like, but right, he, right. He does interviews every day. Right. So, so, um, so you yeah. said, tell me more about your Zen time. So what kinds of things do you do to relax and prepare and center yourself? I mean, really, what? It okay. Um, my Zen time means my phone is silent and I have very relaxing music on. Um, you know, I start getting, you know, it's good. Like when you said, this interview is going to be video recorded, I make sure I brush my hair and I have powder on so I don't look greasy. And I start doing, and I just, I'm prepared. I'm in front of the computer and I'm, you know, doing things that are not going to be stressful. Like I'm not going to try to think of like a brand new pitch for New York Fashion Week right before I do this interview. That's going to take a lot of brain power. You know, I do things like texting and emailing people. So that's my Zen time, which is just preparing for the interview in a very relaxing way and not yeah. stressing Do you review out. the <laughs> questions or do you kind of go over or do you just come in, just be yourself? Um, well, remember this morning I actually emailed you and I asked you what kind of questions you asked, wanted to ask me. So I would go over the questions and I would mentally run them over my head. Um, the questions that you've asked have been asked many, many times. So the talking points are in my head. But if I, for example, know that the questions are something that I am familiar with, right. I probably would write that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like I you know, <laughs> I even do that with asking the questions. I usually have cards, but um like I said today I had to do the tech and it kind of threw me a little bit, but again, just like you said, you know, I feel so comfortable with you and I can edit this later, you know, and the people who are watching pretty much know me. So it's not I mean, we're not like, you know, CNN or anything. <laughs> How, do you feel like you've gotten to know the community on Periscope? Are the people that come to see your streams kind of regulars? Uh, I don't, I haven't Periscope regularly yet, so I haven't 
I haven't had like I don't have super fans on Periscope. I do recognize when blogger peeps come on because I know I can see their handles and stuff. So I try to say hello to blogger babes, but I, there's not been a certain type of community because it, it's still really new. But I can tell you that I have more male followers on Periscope than all my other yeah. social media. <laughs> so, but they've been always very nice. I mean, nothing, you know, but, but I, my fan base has always been very female. Now in Periscope, suddenly there's like, I think a 50% um, male followers. I went. I Which found that cool, to actually. be true as well, and I and I really like it. I I feel more comfortable speaking with a mix of people than all women or all men, obviously. But um, but yeah, there have been some. There's some. I'm have had some really awakening conversations with the brilliant men here at Meerkat and on Blab, and it's um it's very. Oh, yeah. For being a lifestyles blogger, it really opens me up to hope the rest of the population where I had been stuck, stuck is hard, not really exactly. I've been comfortable in my home with all the women supportive women like yourself and the SoCal lady bloggers and the Latina lifestyle bloggers and the blogger babes and all the different conferences. Right. And But now I'm at the point where I want to get into tech and podcasting and that's a male dominated world. So really has been um, a, ra a great crossover right. here um, through live streaming. And I don't know if you've seen this platform before, but Blab is, mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, it's kind of a marriage of Skype or Google with a live streaming and aspect. It's kind of neat. So um, the, the next point from the five most important, no, the, from um, I want to be an irresistible room captivating rock star is to know your crowd. And that is exactly what we're just talking about, knowing your audience and knowing the people who are watching you and who are reading your blog. So how do you, how do you um, engage with your community? Right. Um, well, I think that's, you know, that's all for bloggers, especially if you really know your niche, it's very self filtering For example, the ambition is that it's a fashion blog for working women. So the filter is, is obviously going to be a lot of working women. Um, I try to engage them by making sure whatever content I ask the same question over and over, like, how does this help my readers? You know, I, 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 all my posts, I'd say only 20% are very and 80% is again about helping my readers, and that's how I engage. And I love Carrie's food because the feedback is very instant. You know, you can they ask me questions instantly, and I love social media as well, Instagram or whatever, because that's how I engage with my readers. Because like the blog comments, I can't get to them quickly and really hard but with social media it's really easy and that's how i think my personality shows and engagement is do you still get a lot of comments that. on the blog on on the blog posts or do you i do um but it's hmm. it's decreased slightly and the, the the it used to be the comments were more thoughtful and like three or four sentences and now it's like it's great or um, yeah. Oh my gosh, you look really great, Heidi. You know, nothing really tell. They just commented. I, I just think that's the nature of the internet right now where people have just yeah. too much. They don't have enough time. To the, um, yeah. yeah, no, I found the what same thing. Well, um, there was maybe a season or so where I did receive a lot of comments on my blog. And, you know, I. I played it that way. I put out a call to action or put out questions at the end and really, you know, tried to, to engage people. And right at the time it was fading out. I found that some places didn't even have a comment section or, you know, really wasn't the big thing. And at that time is when the engagement through Twitter really, really got important. And that's where I put my focus. And then now it's, bled into the live mm -hmm. streaming and so and Instagram and even so, not so much for me with Pinterest but um, but definitely Instagram and I haven't tried Snapchat yet but that I heard is you know engaging as well so like I think I think that my question really is so do you do all of your own social media or do you have somebody who helps you because you have so many followers 
Um, well, it doesn't matter how many followers I have. The amount of work is almost the same. <laughs> um, but I have a lot of channels, for both Blogger Beats and The Ambitionista. And for The Ambitionista, especially Instagram and Twitter, it's, it's okay. I would say 70% is me. But there's still scheduled content that uh, we have a social media manager and she manages both The Ambitionista and Blogger Babes. And I have help in that sense because there's no way I can. Yeah, that's a full time thing. And <laughs> all day. Yeah. And, and it's most most bloggers that I know have some sort of help. Um, it's just sad that a lot of them don't want to admit it. But I think you should because a lot of bloggers think that you're doing all this yourself and you're obviously not a superwoman. You need the help. But so, yeah, it's uh, 70% 70, 70 is me for Instagram and Twitter, and the rest is my social media for the ambition of blog debate. She does okay. my social media. Okay. Does well, that's, stuff. you know, that's what we are taught to do is to get help. And you're doing that very well. You know, um, yeah. personally, I just am at the point where I'm focusing on one thing at a time. You know, I'll do a little bit of everything else, but put most of my right. effort into one and then yeah. just rotate. Yeah. I always tell new bloggers as well. So which one should I do? And I said, well, pick the two where mm -hmm. your audience are at and then the other one you could have your name um you know you should have the same name across all platforms but pick two that you're really going to go concentrate on and then you know just concentrate on those two because you're only one person if you try to do all you know snapchat and twitter and periscope and yeah you yeah to, you're absolutely. just gonna get burned out you can't it's so much fun though i mean i love it i love i love everything about it so you know it's i enjoy doing the things that myself um and then i'm not a full-time blogger so or a podcaster i do it as uh part-time i have a full-time job that i stay with for now so eventually you know it will it will I can let it grow. I've been working at nurturing mine, but I'm not here to talk about me. So I should really go on. Um, that's, <laughs> I keep segueing right into this. Your, your post was written so well that it just takes me right to the next point in that it's your number six is um, give, give credit where credit is due. And um, you know, so you acknowledge mm -hmm. that you have that help and you know we're um who influenced you who would you credit as someone who helped you to change to this new job or to do so well who's who who do you want to give credit to um i can't give credit to uh one single person because i think my success is actually the combination of having a wonderful family my boyfriend uh is the most amaz amazing Aww. partner a woman can have. He <laughs> doesn't know anything about fashion, but he's so supportive, you know, like he'd tear out something from a magazine and come home and try to show it to me, even though it's, you know, I've known about it for six months because I'm a blogger, but the, the thought that he's really supportive, that gives me a lot of um, emotional support. You know, when I come home and I'm trying to talk about my, my blog and as someone who's really like listening to you and, and just is there for you that's really something that money can buy and i know this personally because i was in a relationship where my ex-boyfriend he was not the opposite of support mm. that almost killed me in my blog and made me doubt myself and i having seen both sides it's really important to have friends and family that support you like i've heard from bloggers where their friends you know are not supportive and they feel small they don't even want to tell people that they're blogging because their friends are for whatever reason, um, do not want to acknowledge their blog. And I, and I tell them, find your yeah. friends. <laughs> people who support um, you. So you have to have, and, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I really get a lot of support from my blogger babes, both, you know, bloggers who are at the top of their field because that's my role models. And to see them achieve so much, publishing books and getting a million followers and things they do and then that's a, if they can do that and i should be able to do that as well in my own way and for new bloggers the energy that new bloggers bring and their perspective and their thoughts 
also refresh um, you know, my energy as well and keep things in perspective for me of what I achieve. Sometimes you can get really demotivated when you hear of some blogger getting three million followers and I'm like, oh, well, why can't that be me? Like, I have that too. You know? So if you're a new blogger, say, oh my gosh, Heidi, and you, your blog helped me or your advice helped me, gives me, spurs me to go. So I get, I get support from both um, expert bloggers and new bloggers. And like I said, happy friends and family. Who would be an expert blogger that you emulate? Shout out to um, Kathy Kudalski. She's such a sweet, um, she's got a blogger babes, and she's been such a great, um, you know, sounding part for me. And also, I'd like to shout out to Marie Benet, the Kirby fashionista. She was one of my earliest mentors and gave me some basic of blogging as a business, and, you know, she's badass. And could, you, could you type um, the names in with so yeah, that we can I, acknowledge them? That'd be great. And anyone else you think yeah, of, um, and we could tweet them. That'd be awesome. And and then we'll take that we'll take a little break. And if you want to get some water or something, and then I'll go through the questions and we'll ask, answer some of the questions. Really I know. I, so room, I, don't know why. I was like, I'm <laughs> oh my god, the fans on all the way. Okay. Um. Mm. Okay, Marie Dene, I love her. I met her many times. She's amazing. Okay. Um, what are you doing? Okay. It's either happy, healthy, vegan, vegan kitchen, or healthy, happy. He like, healthy, it's happy. Either happy. <laughs> happy, okay. healthy, happy, healthy. That looks right. I feel like. <laughs> kill me if I get it wrong. She's like, Heidi, really? You, you help me my book launch. You should uh, memorize oh, this right so now. bad. The stuff like that. I'm always um, getting things right. And I can't believe I got your, your name right. I've probably typed it a hundred times in the last few days. So. <laughs> um, As a read in. But you said it you know, right. Okay, so good. I like that. Yeah. I'm Not happy. Really I'm happy that I could say that, right? Because I, once I knew it that way, if it wasn't that way, it would be hard for me to change because I've learned, you know. But um, but you're the ambitionista, yeah. you know? You're the vlogger, babe. Right. Babe. <laughs> <laughs> the head vlogger, babe. The head, the head babe. Uh, and I should mention that uh, for the vlogger, babes, I actually have a partner, a business partner. Her name is Oh, that's right. I remember her now. name. Um, um, you know, she's the co-founder and CEO. And without her, I probably would be dead by now because she holds blogger babes together. Mm -hmm. Because running a blog is a full-time job, and there's no way I can run the machinista and blogger babes at the same time. And so, the pawn has been crucial to the growth of blogger. Well, um, it's. I think it's having a partner is pretty amazing and since i have a new partner and um his name is jay and he's my co-host for this show it has just changed the, having somebody yeah. to be my sounding board and to understand what i'm going through and to know what it's like behind yeah. the scenes and just those things that he said in the last few weeks about how difficult he sees how hard it is and he started his own podcast and um had always wanted to and he felt motivated to do it after working with me but then he came back and he said man it it's really hard you know and i'm he's done one and i've been doing them for a while every week and I am, you know, it is, it's, I'm one person. So um, having just a support person. And then I know that Pond uh, has done a lot of the writing for your, um, your, your book, the notebook, right? Yeah. Uh, we have several books out on Kindle. Um, I, I co-wrote some of the books, but she did, she was very instrumental in putting the process together. You know, we have, our books were very high quality. I mean, they are very high quality. We have professional editors going through them, copywriters, graphic designers. But there needs to be someone who is looking over the whole process and finding that person. If it was me, those books would be in raw drafts just sitting there, like not anything. 
took them to give it to me and she added her, you know, she added her own materials and polished them up and put them up <laughs> for the whole world. So I'm glad Between the two of you, who's that. more creative? <laughs> I think we're both creative in different ways. Um, I'm more visual than she is, um, which is both good and bad because I can see the tiniest little flaw in any graphic. And if I don't hold myself, the graphic process of our designer can be like 50 iterations. Like it has to be that perfect. But now I know it's just me that's been crazy. And if it's good enough it's good enough like i told myself five iterations and that's it has to go out I, unless it's really really when pawn can see it then then something is wrong because pawn already says it's not visual so if you can see something's wrong then obviously something is going to have to get it again so visually i'm more um creative than she is but in terms of business like new business development she's very creative like she knows how to let's just out like no we can do this more things and this this you know, part of the thing and 80 percent of block sources is free only 20 percent you know like our kindles are, are you know um, paid information but again she knows what to do so that we can monetize them so that we blog of it can survive and this items we can actually do for free so i think I that's fantastic that. that's really cool so I have a few questions for you over here on the side. And one is, um, uh, we'd like to have your opinion on how brands could best work with bloggers to keep it authentic, yet still get our message across. So how you spoke a little bit to that already about having um, a connection with the brand and and shoot picking and choosing. But when you have a brand that you want to work with, how do you keep it authentic and get your message across? First of all, I guess I would ask, what is your message? Um, how to keep a message authentic? I think I, I've, it's very simple for me. Um, if I love that brand and I use it organically, I that's authentic. And if I could even imagine myself you know, using that brand, then I would not work with them. And I think if just following this simple rule, you can you can pretty keep yourself on this straight and you know straight and narrow. Because let's just take Target for example. Just for whatever reason, I just don't go to Target. I love Target; they have nicely designed stuff, but I just don't go there. And so I could never. I can as a person to them, and I just I can't because I can't I don't go there. And it's my my readers would know I don't. I would reject brands that not reject, but I would decline to work with brands that I just don't go, yeah. go naturally. Hmm? Is that a bit of? Yeah, that's yeah, that, sometimes yeah. that's where the headphones work better. <laughs> There's a, it gets feedback. Okay, let me see if we can. Or did you stop periscoping? Um, I'm still periscoping. I'm just gonna repeat okay. up the question. So I guess I could use my headphones. I could use my headphones is this too. Better? Um, they're adorable. <laughs> really cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The other question was tips on doing an about me page. How do you feel about the about me page? Uh, and and do you have any advice on how to keep it, you know, fresh? I guess. Yeah. How to do an about me page? Um. Well, the first thing is, think of ten ten questions that a new reader would ask you, um, like a ten FAQ, frequently asked questions, and start from there, and then try to add three things that are. I don't want to say random, but very interesting about you that people would like to know about. So start with, with those two tips. For example, three things that people really don't know about me, or well, they know now, because I tell everybody is, I am a cat freak, I love cats. I used to have 20 cats when I grew up. And now that my boyfriend is allergic to cats, all I can <laughs> do is watch cat videos on YouTube. That's how I told myself. 
Um, I don't drive. I'm such a horrible driver. Yes, I am that Asian <laughs> woman who cannot drive. <laughs> it's like my brother's like, you know. Um, but I really am a horrible driver, so I don't drive in LA, which is crazy. I Uber it everywhere. And the third thing is, um, I forgot what the third thing was. So, <laughs> yeah. So have have information about you that people would like to know about and make it interesting. So that's how, and and I think if you can, one great photo of you will be great. I know some bloggers who don't even want to have one photo of themselves. With me. I think if you're you're a blogger and you, if you're a lifestyle blogger, people would like to know you know more of you. Right. So at right. least one photo. Yeah. Photo. Uh, well, gee, I I feel really good right now because that's pretty much what I have. <laughs> I have. I have a photo of me in my Jeep yeah. and people ask me all the time, is that your Jeep or is that really, you know, a, a Jeep? Because the photographer made it look so amazing that it looks kind of like a prop, but that is actually my car. That's my Jeep. And, um, and so, wow. and I do drive that. Okay. And um, so, yeah, I became kind of known as the Jeep woman. And I think that's, that's exactly what you're speaking to. Something unique and different that might set you apart and, and reflect who you really are. Yeah. I like that. So does that mm -hmm, does that help mm -hmm. if anybody has any more so. questions? And I have to thank Nancy for um, letting us know about the echo and definitely better. I, I had to turn my you, um, my meerkat off completely. And this is why my co-host usually streams from his house in Oakland, California. <laughs> and it comes out beautiful. But having it here, okay. I just it's I'm not good at it. I can't do both. Some things we just can't do, but okay. you're doing great at it. And so I'm glad right. I also have three sons and there's four people other than me in the house and they're all probably on their phones right now. So sometimes I'm like, come on guys, just give me those two hours and let me have all the bandwidth and all the Wi-Fi. But that's a luxury I don't have right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. And my building uh, has um, very crappy internet. I mean, even when we have a landline, the internet would suddenly go off, which is my biggest fear. But thankfully, yeah, no, that, that's not going to happen. Not We're happen, good. So. You're We're wonderful. Good. Thank you so much for putting up with all of my little glitches. But you know, um, you know how it is when you're starting out. So I wanted to talk to you also about your concept of helping women conquer the world in style. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I came up with that tagline. I thought that. Uh, embodies my blog uh, perfectly because it is about style and it is about ambition. Very so. good. Very good. <laughs> so, um, and helping bloggers okay. blog better, obviously, you know, that that's what you do. But um, where did, the, where do you think that came from when you, there's so many powerful words in that statement, helping women conquer the world in style. I mean, it tells you a lot about who you are, I think. And, and how, how maybe you approach things. Is, you, is that true? Do you feel that way? Um, I've always been a very visual person. Um, like I said, when I work in Tokyo, it really opened up my eyes to how stylish and fashionable women can be. And and I, and I love fashion and style. And at the same time, I'm a serious working woman. I don't spend myself, you know, shopping around in Beverly Hills in really you know pink suits i'm i'm a working woman so and sometimes i feel that some women think there's a separation between being stylish and mm. also working and and also i think some of them fear that if they seem stylish they would mm -hmm. not be taken seriously and i think that my blog is trying to say no you can be stylish you can look amazing and wear those you know heels if you want to or flats whatever you want but you can look kick ass and really do kick ass right. like you shouldn't have to choose um and that's my message like you can be feminine you can you know have long hair and wear this beautiful pencil skirt with you know lobutan heels and men will still take you seriously and they do i was an investment banker and i've and i was very fashionable to a degree of course i'm not going to wear a fringe skirt and you know boho poncho to my investment banking <laughs> meeting but i there should be no reason why somebody could not mm -hmm. look fabulous mm -hmm. and take it seriously. No, 
that's, that's a great the sentence right message. there. There's no reason that anyone couldn't look fabulous and be taken seriously. So that's good. I like that. <laughs> so um, right. let me see. Where was I? Um, the next article that I that stood out to me was what are the most important questions you should ask yourself? And you quoted Peter Drucker and um, Joan Sindercol from Why Millennials Matter. And the five questions um, I thought were kind of good that I just asked you those questions. So um, do you remember what they are? <laughs> it's like <laughs> the five questions the, the you five. should ask yourself. Um, I think it was the end of that was for your business or something, but I just think for on a personal level, like, and for your, your um, blogger babes and the ambitionista, what is your mission? What is your personal mission? Um, I think my, my mission is, like I said, is to show that women can be stylish and successful and be taken seriously at the same time. And that's, that's my my core brand message. Like everything I do comes from that. Like I'm, I Did love. Did that come things. from a time um, when you didn't feel like you were taken seriously in business, or did it come from an experience that you had, or that you just felt that other people were having? How 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 did that come about? Uh, I think it came really from the from my two personalities. One was I I don't have I never had that experience where people didn't take me seriously. But again, I was this go-getting investment banker in you know one of the capitals of the world. And at the same time, I really love fashion and I wanted to merge both those things together. Like I I love just looking at beautiful clothes. It gives me an adrenaline rush. Like I can stay up all night just looking at beautiful clothes and making my apartment look you know beautiful i'm very visual it would upset me if my house or apartment did not look a certain way or if my uh. clothes did not look a certain way so i thought why can't i be both you know why do people have the stereotype where if she's really into fashion then she's obviously not taking care of business or mm. she's not serious about work when it's not true you know I think it shows that you really care about how you look and that translate more also into your, your business. And I don't understand why it should be separate. So to answer your question, it's really to um, bring together those two mm -hmm. disparate parts that of my sounds personality. Good. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry. Good. I don't have a traumatic incident where somebody didn't take care of me. Own that. And so That's I need great. it now. It's really you know, just, we don't all have to be victims and <laughs> yeah. we don't have to all have yeah. room out of adversity <laughs> sometimes we just have a realization and it makes sense and i appreciate that you you're candid with that you you know for you it was two things that you loved and you married them together and now you're you are helping other people yeah. because um they do that is you know an answer to a problem that some people have so um you know that's fantastic and so who is your customer who is the person that you uh, appeal to most Um, I know for a fact that my readers tend to be college graduates who I'd say 27 to 45. Those are usually my, my readership uh, demographic and they tend to be stylish and they tend to be ambitious and they tend to be more cosmopolitan, which is the, the, the um, personality of my blog because I travel a lot and I reference, you know, to, a lot of um, you know nice destinations and that's usually do you know you reflect your readers so there's a lot of readers who are like me in those sense and like I said it's also self-filtering there's readers who don't agree with me and so they don't read my blog so, um, so that so that makes so, sense so you know who that's who your um, demographics are and um, do you ever when mm -hmm. you write do you ever write to one person in particular do you like have a muse or someone that you think of? Yeah. Do you? A persona? Yes, I do actually. Um, I, I have, I, I'd like to call her uh, <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> I have a Sandy that I write to and I was thinking, what would, because it's actually one of my um, readers from 
she's one of my earliest readers and she used to write to me just sandy she wrote she signed her, her name as sandy and she'd say things like heidi i really love what you're saying what would you, what do you think about this like she would ask me questions by email and so when i write it's, it's almost like i think well, ah. this is something that sandy would ask you know how you know what's a, a, a staple that a woman would need that's not a black blazer because i think almost everybody has a black blazer and i thought a white mm -hmm. blazer would be the second thing you know it's not as obvious but a white blazer is is the perfect you know mm -hmm. counterpoint to a black blazer when you want to feel powerful and you want to you want to be you know more attention grabbing so to speak when you're hosting a meeting than a white blazer yeah and you don't want to be black. that that power <laughs> um, um hungry red blazer which is such a it's overkill well you can but red is such a such a very powerful color and that if if you're just starting out i'd say you go with you know and you're starting I, i'm assuming that my reader is somebody who, who's like not really there yet in fashion you know she's just trying to find her foot in the fashion world so i'm not going to say from the get go get a right. red blazer she's oh, like oh right. no i can't wear a red blazer um right so we'll go you know and and I, she needs to have her staples sorted so we'll start with the black blazer and and the black palms and you know the black suit and then once okay i have that now what like i want to take it up to the next level and i said well then the white blazer and then when she really wants to really take it up then yes the red the red blazer and actually red is not that attention grabbing is doing right there's many shades of red like you're wearing actually two shades of red right now um and it, it really depends on your skin color and, and uh, even where you are um red is actually can be a very nice neutral um, i'm glad i love red i love red when i was <laughs> I in business color. i wore I, a lot of red i had I had a bunch of suits and I would just coordinate them with different tops and switch them around. But I had, you know, your standard, the black and a, and a magenta or wine was really popular at the time. And this was about 10 years, 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had my red power suit right. and my, you know, my red jacket. Mm, I just, I, you know, those were my staples, okay. but um, never did the white. I always wanted to, I had a, a cream suit that I used to love to wear. That was this pencil skirt. Okay. With a, and at the time it was really long jackets that were popular, very slimming for me, it was, was great style because I was always round. So that really offset that. But, um, but yeah, you know, for me, business clothing got boring. It was suits where I worked in a bank too and in, with finance and also, and I was an executive assistant. So it was kind of a uniform, you know, pearls, pumps, and, and a suit, you know, so I got bored. You gave me those three things. I can, I can come up with, you know, all those endless, endless variations. variations yes. Well, it's, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it was wonderful. I actually liked it quite a bit. Now I'm a little bit more of a casual, casual <laughs> person, but um, my old Navy t-shirt, <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> I'm casual too. I'm, I'm wearing this, you know, black and white uh, long sleeve Cute. tee and this black harem that's pants. That's the it's, best. You yeah, know, I'm at home. That's the best. I, yeah. That's funny. I, yeah. That's awesome. So, um, <laughs> what the next question on that what is the most important questions you should ask yourself for your business is what does the customer value and so like that's a really great question for business if you want to know you know your customer to take it to the next level and ask what do they value so what would you say um your customers or your your viewers value or what are their core values um, well, I think what they value from me is that the fact that I, I speak from a wealth of experience, like I, I'm actually an ex corporate executive that became a fashion blogger. And so my tips are very reality based. Like sometimes, you know, you read to a magazine, they go like, top 10 things to wear to the office and you're like nine of these things you can't <laughs> wear to the office you can't wear those neon spiky pumps or you can't wear you know that fringe bucket bag because it's <laughs> very odd <laughs> and so i came from i'm very reality based um 
And I think a lot of my readers value that. I have readers who come up to me like, I never follow fashion blogs, but I love your fashion because it's reality based right. and it's very doable. Um, and the second thing is, I don't have the body of a model. I'm 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 very curvy. I'm my size can range from a four to an eight. You know, I'm not zero to two. Like I can't do sample Aww. sizes. So again, it's yeah. very, it's but no, it's okay. I mean, I love body, myself, and that's and, a good size to be. I it's healthy. <laughs> no, I I know my angles. Like certain angles, I look like what the hell? And like, my photographer, Sabrina, <laughs> you, you didn't tell me I look like this. <laughs> and your uh, angles. So, but I know my angles. But at the same time, you know, I know how. Now that I've been a blogger for so long, I know how certain pieces they flatter me certain pieces i would it's like kryptonite like i'm not even going to go there so you need to know what flatters you and and work with that and stop trying to reach crazy standards that you know you'll never achieve you know you're not 510 size 02 with you know endless legs you're i'm not mm-hmm. that and a lot of people are not that so i think a lot of my readers like that look you know she's actually a real woman with curves and you know she can look great in clothes so I'm hoping my readers can translate that. Like, you can look great. So they value well. that that connection yeah. with you and that um, realism. That's that's very good. Now, so right. um, I think you already covered the next one. What are the results of that? I think what are what are the results of of connecting with your um, viewers in that way? Um, well, the results is obviously uh, yeah they stay with you <laughs> <laughs> and. They stay with me. Um, I also have better engagement. Uh, you know, I use Alexa and I notice that the bounce rate on my blog is very low. I have a 30 to 20% bounce rate uh, compared to a few blogs on my level. They have mm-hmm. a 50, 60% bounce rate. People stay mm-hmm. there less than 15 seconds and people actually read my pages. Like the average reader, uh, viewer actually reads about four to six pages. Mm-hmm. So that says a lot. Like they actually listen to me. And I and I tell this to brands as well. Yeah, I'm like so and so blogger might be might have a million readers, but you know, did you check her bounce rate? Did you check her average, you know, page views per, per visitor? And they and they never think about these things. So you have to tell them. So another message for bloggers is that you have to know your strengths and you have to know what you have and bring that um, to to potential sponsors and don't be afraid to do a bit of comparison. Some people say that's mean. I don't want to, you know, talk about this other blog. I'm like, well, I'm not doing it in public. I'm not putting it out there. I understand it's still a personal blog, but when it comes down to it, and you have to sell yourself. These are just facts. I'm not, I'm not mm. saying anything that's not true. I'm not saying anything that's bad. It's that's just just facts. You know, my bounce rate is so and so. Hers is so and so, and she has a million you know, readers and I have so much. So you just have to give, you know, but you have to sell it to your sponsors and not be afraid. That's to, excellent to, advice. Um, and you're right. It's not putting anybody down or trying to hurt yeah. anybody else. It's just saying how you measure up. Right. And there are analytics programs where you can enter in somebody else and track how they're doing and see what their things are. And, and I've always right. found value in that right. um, more as an ego boost for myself than for selling myself. But at least it makes me feel a little <laughs> bit better because I think, you know, I'm envious of this person and what they're getting. But if you compare the numbers, I should be able to get that too. So, right. You know, that's what that, that's right. what that is. So, so finally, right. the last question in that part is what is your plan? So, so how do you make that into a plan for, for improving your blog or your business or for, um, for furthering your mission? Um, I'd say that my plan is I what I like to turn the ambition design mm-hmm. into an online destination or a portal where working women could come and get all the resources they need for their daily lives, be it um, work wise or you know anything, anything to do with with the lifestyle of a working woman. I like it to be a portal, and mm-hmm. I'd like to have more writers come on board because at the end of the day, or even fifteen years from now, I don't want to be a 60 year old fashion blogger, <laughs> you know, still posing and right? like I maybe I want to do that sometimes if I still look good, but I would like to have the option of stepping back if I want to. I don't want to be, be you know, uh, tied up to my blog in that way. Like Oprah, you know, she's she's still Oprah, but she doesn't need to right. be there all the time. Um, 
I'd also like to see how this translates into other mediums. Um, I can't say much right now, but there's some big things going on. Um, and I'll, I'll keep oh, up that's so exciting to hear. Happens, I'm glad. So. I'm glad there's yeah. some things coming up. And, you know, maybe you could, I, I think we should take a quick break. I just want to um, actually mention again that I'm going to be pitching our are sharing with everybody my experience with a new product called Allurve. And Allurve is a new um, scientifically proven beauty and skincare product um, mm -hmm. that changes the DNA of your mm -hmm. skin uh, by the use of patches. So it's the same as medically um, applying a, a, a patch by the designed by the same people. So we're going to try that. And then I also want to say that okay. next week on Tuesday night on 10 Minutes in Tinseltown, I have David Dorian Ross joining me and he's a Tai Chi master. And so we're going to talk about his um, online training and courses that he, he does and how he became a Tai Chi um, um, master and um, a, a wonderful speaker about mindfulness, which is something that I love. And um, I want to thank my top viewers. And I know that very few of them are here right now because I think there's a lot of competition going on in other streams and people are hopping around and we've kind of lost the audience with Meerkat. But my main thing is to keep it going and have a beautiful video that I can cut and make from this. But my top viewers on um, Meerkat are Tammy from um, at Vintage Path, Mark at Market. Mark T. Cram and G at the Mom Ledger. And I know that they'll all be in and out of this lab and we'll see them next week and in other streams on Meerkat. And I appreciate them so much. And of course, I want to thank Jay, my co-host, even though he's not here because he gives me constant support. He's been sending out streams and shout outs from Disneyland and, and, um, um, the uh, pi not the pirate adventure, the medieval times, and all the places he's going to with his kids, and he still sends me texts and asks how I'm doing. And so, thank you to Jay at Gene Wilder's Hair. And um, so, do you have uh, any questions? We have so typical me is in the house. She actually sent me a little message on Facebook, and I was able to tell her to come here because she was trying to find us on Meerkat. So she knows how to make it happen. So uh, I really want to thank her. She's a fantastic blogger. And I know if you have any questions, um, you can ask Heidi. And I don't know if you've ever met her, but uh, she's a, a wonderful blogger and extremely successful uh, with her blog and her leadership of other bloggers. And um, right now, I wanted to ask you to tell us about the Digital Diva series and your um, Blogger Babes Kindle series. So can you tell me what's happening with that? Okay, uh, I'm not gonna talk about the Digital Diva series except that uh, okay. because we are planning some things right now, so I don't want okay. different information. The Blogger Babes Kindle, uh, basically it's a series of books. We have seven Kindles out right now um, talking about the basics of blogging. We call them the ah. Blogger Babes Blueprints cover seven different uh, core topics that a blogger should master if she really wants to take her blog to the next level. And these are the books that I've uh, spoken to you about, co-written by mm -hmm. myself and mm -hmm. on Sabra, my co-founder. Uh, and, and we're really proud of them. We put a lot of work into them, you know, editing, writing, getting case studies and stuff. And the feedbacks on Amazon speak for themselves, 4.5, five stars. And yeah, we're very proud of them. And I love for everyone to check them so out. So what what is the next level? When we always talk about that, the next level, what's the next level in blogging? What's the next level in blogging for me? And then what's the next level for blogging for you? Uh -huh. I think it's different for different people. I mean, it depends on what you want out of blogging. For me, it's uh, my blog has become a brand, like the Ambitionista is now a brand, therefore the blog is actually that that platform and where can you go from there? And just like uh, a lot of uh, brands, it's always about, um, how do you say, reaching out to other platforms. For example, now we're online, so do you want to go on TV? Do you want to you know, have books out and publish them? Do you want mm -hmm. to be known as a public speaker? Um, and a lot of bloggers now have agents 
and publicist. Like I have an agent and a publicist because you mm -hmm. there's only so much you can do uh, as as a blogger. You know, you have all this. I have every day five ten emails asking me to do work with them, and and I'm actually, as you can tell, I'm a very nice person, and I hate <laughs> negotiating. And he's, it helps having an agent who's playing bad cop so she's like and she's tougher than i am and you know sometimes i'm like yeah okay i'll do it she's like no don't do it unless you know so and so so it's really nice having that um an agent who who's, mm -hmm. who's advocating for you and i and if you get a really great agent she helps she's that another wall mm -hmm. you can bounce ideas off you know sometimes you don't know whether it's going to be a bad idea or a great idea that you have. Like I sometimes think of crazy ideas and like, Hey, what do you think? And sometimes my ideas are great. Sometimes it's like, were you, <laughs> did you sleep well last night? <laughs> have this idea. So it's great. I, I, I love having shout out to my agent, Erica Hicks. Um, she is, she's a powerhouse and I'm so lucky to have her in my life. Just making things easier for me. You know, when I was in New York, I almost, I didn't have time to, to sleep. It was going out at 9 a.m., coming back at 7 or 8 or 9 p.m. at night because she made sure that my time in New York is meeting mm -hmm. clients that are a great fit for me. And so that's the next level is branching my, my out. blog as a platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Branching out. That's for right. me, it's just yeah. making some money. <laughs> It'd be nice. <laughs> that's, the first step. that's the first step. The first step is using your blog mm -hmm. to get income and either be directly by affiliate links or ads or second is uh, via sponsored posts. And once you have more readership, you know, social media campaigns and for a fashion blogger, you can also go into styling and hosting events. It's, it's really, I would say, mm -hmm. be creative about it. You know, you can have several types of um, activations or campaigns with, with a brand. And the other thing that I like to, say to new bloggers and also all bloggers is that when you work with a brand think long term don't think like i want to get a one sponsored mm -hmm. post because you know it's hard work to get that one sponsor think of a series of posts or a year-long project you know obviously when you first start nobody's one going to commit themselves to you for a whole year but maybe the second time after a campaign has goes well say to the brand or the sponsor Look, what do you think if we do a series of blog posts Mm -hmm. you know spread out over six months and and, and repeat great events, idea. you know with other that's helpful houses. to me right now yeah. that is that's, that's really I'm helpful to me right now because even though i've been blogging a long time i've shifted my direction many times i've stopped and i focused on writing a book i stopped and focused and became a, a life coach and now i'm combining all of those things together in this you know interviewing process which i love and I'm trying to roll it all together into one thing and it's just gotten so big. And in that, I lose yeah. my readership from, and my numbers go down because I'm not posting regularly artic you know, articles and content that is measurable, it's, all, it's out there. So I have to find the right partners. If you have competition posts, um, even if you don't post regularly, your, your numbers should the still be people are still there. Stable. They still come to see everything that I post when I post it. It's just that well, I don't get the um, I don't get the uh, sponsored posts or campaigns coming in be if I'm not out there posting like almost daily. If I post something daily, okay. uh, they just come in on their own. I don't have to go find them. But I'm at a point right now where I want to find the right people, like you said, like to to work with who will be there long term to help me with the podcast. So, you know, it's happening. Okay. It is. It's happening, you know. Yeah. And the more I it's put that out there and ask for it, the more people come around. So that's, you know, I just updated my blog today with my, um, I changed my connect with me page or contact me page to partners. And then I just put up a bunch of pictures of all the different ads and things I've done in the past four or five years and made right. it into kind of a little, uh, um, you know, little with a collage. And then, um, you know, then I said, you know, if you want to partner with me, this is what you'll get. And so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Right. <laughs> Thanks covert. This is not about me, but I can't help but keep drawing out of uh, Heidi. All